Okay, so we're going to talk about this new project today uh, that I've already started on. Um, as you've seen in the before picture, uh, she was pretty well, pretty badly broken. This is a fairly tall figurine uh, for the type of object it is. It is real fine porcelain. And um, so it's. Uh, I fix this a little differently than the things that you may have seen me work on where it's uh, a lower fired ceramic non-porcelain like uh, stonewares, uh, terracottas, uh, but when you get into the porcelains you're, you're getting close to a material that's very similar to glass. And, um, and this is a very fine piece of this kind of this type of pottery. Now. Um, what I'm doing here is uh, I'm working on some of these individual pieces separately because it's easier to work on them in this state than to have this big heavy thing uh, to move around and, and do fine work on it. It's heavy and uh, it's easier to work on these, these smaller portions. Uh, less weight to deal with and, and you know I, I can move it around without accidentally damaging something else because of the weight of this object. There are a lot of little things like fingers and flowers and things that you know if you have it sitting the wrong way while you're working on it you could accidentally break something else off. So and and so I've already begun to reassemble this if you can, you can see it doesn't look like the before picture because I put some of it together already. Um, I'm rebuilding this body to a point where I'm going to stop here and start filling some of the crack lines, which you probably can't see in this image, but there's a lot of little crack lines where all these things got glued together. Most of the damage on here is from here up. Uh, I'm missing a flower, broken some ribbons, broken some, uh, some lace here. There's a crack through here. All of these arms and things are broken off. And so I'm, I'm going to work on them uh, separately. And one of those parts is this arm, which is going to be a lot easier to work on. I have to do a lot of fine work on this arm, and it's going to be a lot easier to work on uh, like this than if it were in place when this is repaired. The arm is going to be like this, and it's really hard to get my tools up in and around this stuff if it's glued on first. So if I had leave it off, I can work around and fill all these cracks that are hard. To, they'll be underneath and behind things if I glue it together. So I'm going to work on this separately. One of the things I did here, if you can zoom in on this, is I had to rebuild these fingertips. Can you see that? I had to rebuild these little fingertips on uh, three of the fingers. Uh, I've started on it and I've actually rebuilt them. Uh, they were, they were uh, broken off and, and from about here up is new material. Um, I basically built the, the general shape up to just to have something there uh, and I'll do the finer work on it once I have that in place. Now I have something I can build on. So that and then um, there's a lot of little chips and cracks and things all the way around here that will be a lot easier to work on uh, if I leave it um, here in this state. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to continue to work on this. I'll be filling some of the cracks in here. And um, uh, we'll follow through the job um, from then on. I didn't show this bonding together of this part, uh, it was just kind of tedious. And since I'm going to have to bond these pieces back on there, it's just going to be re a repeat of the same thing. So you'll see some of that um, coming up a little later. Okay, so I got some work to do on this. Uh, it's a, quite a bit of work on it. It's hard to tell from these pictures, but there's a lot of fine uh, detail work in here that you just can't see in this image. So I got my work cut out for me. Well, I've got my Millipot 
uh, epoxy fill mixed up. I'm going to start filling in the cracks and chips on this section while I have easy access to those locations. Fortunately, you may not be able to see what I'm doing very well. But I think you get the idea. Get every chip and void and also along the line the break line for every crack because even though it may be a good fit there is a microscopic hairline crack that needs to be hidden This is how we address that. The epoxy I'm using is called Milliput. Comes in several colors. It is used quite a bit in the restoration industry and modelers and other folks. It's, it's very well made. It's a very good product. It's uh, made in Wales. So I tend to overfill my fill areas so that I have something to file down to. And it's often uh, this, what I'm doing is done in several stages. You feel it and you file it, and then you feel it and file it again until that transition, any breaking, any damaged area is completely invisible. It's tedious work, it takes time, no real way to rush it.
Okay, and so now it's the next day. Our millet putt fill that I put on all the cracks and things are the fill is cured, and now I'm gonna file it down with a file. And we'll probably do we'll do this, and then I'll probably end up doing another uh, fill again, and then we'll file it down again. It takes two or three steps to do this to get this transition perfectly smooth and to get all the, um, the crack lines perfectly smooth and uh, where you can't see any of the transitions. There's like way more fill than I need here. But some of these are cracks and some of them are chips and always just overfill it so you can file down to the surface. But it's not difficult, just tedious and time consuming. And uh, this is a great way to dull your files if they're Wear, if you want to wear out a file really quick, file on some porcelain. Um, you know, I use an old broken porcelain coffee cup to sharpen my X-Acto knives. Okay, so if it'll sharpen a knife, it will definitely dull a knife. And so I have a little bit of alcohol on my swab here, and that will take off the that gray that the file leaves on the, because that gray is actually metal coming off the file.
Okay, so today we're gonna glue this. I'm gonna bond this uh, arm on, the arm and the head. And right now, let's start with the, with this arm. I got my Hixel, and it's thick now. It's the thickness of oh, honey. Or a thick oil. modeling clay it's just just using it to hold stuff hold this arm in place because I don't want to use tape and that should do it Once this sets up a little bit, we'll come back and do the head. Both my excess. Squeeze out. Okay, so now we've got the arm, both arms on and the head on, and I just need to repair the seams where the, I put the head on. So we're going to go around here with my fill and get this seam where the head's attached and make that invisible. Thank you. 